Hi, I'm David Berlin with blockchainjournal.com. I'm coming to you from Davos, Switzerland, where right now the World Economic Forum is taking place. Lots of world leaders, business leaders gathered at the Congress Center down the road right from this studio. We're, we're located right next to the main promenade. And I've been going around the entire event looking for people who want to talk a little bit about blockchain. We've been looking for a lot of the layer one blockchains to talk to. And one of the ones that are, that's here is Hedera. And in the spirit of full disclosure, Hedera is one of blockchainjournal.com's sponsors. They uh, helped get us off the ground. And I'm speaking with Christian Hasker, who is the chief marketing officer of Hedera and uh, Swirls Lab. So thank you very much for joining me here. Great to be here. Yeah, so it's good to have you. And, uh, you know, we, we've been going around talking to some of the other folks who, who, who do layer ones. And I wanted to make sure that, I, in fairness, I came back here and gave you a shot at talking about Hedera as a layer I one. And so there are a lot of layer ones out there, as long as we're on that topic. Pro, you know, if you went to Masari, <laughs> many, and also uh, a lot of smart contract enabled layer ones. Because I think, in general, for blockchainjournal.com, our focus is going to be on many of the layer ones that allow enterprises to customize and build their own, write their own code to run on top of those chains. And uh, Hedera is one of those chains that smart that you can build smart contracts on. So, in the in the spirit of all of these different layer ones, they all have unique value propositions to separate uh, target developers and audiences and, and organizations. What is the target of the, the primary target of Hedera? Um, so great question, David. And Hedera really was conceived from the get-go to be a little bit different from other um, layer one blockchains. So it is designed from the ground up to be highly, highly scalable with very fast finality, so low latency, and at a very cheap, predictable cost of each transaction on the network. So that's on the technology side of things. And then the other important thing for layer one protocols is the governance model. So again, uh, from its inception, Hedera was designed to have very strong governance. What does that mean? It means that we are governed by a group of global organizations, large enterprises, and also universities. And that was to have a very high trust model. So um, our primary focus is to be the chain that is adopted, mass adopted by enterprises. And we believe that there are obstacles to adoption, that we have very good solutions to each of those challenges. Okay, so you mentioned a few criteria. Let's start. And the reason I want to ask you these questions is because when I speak to the purveyors of other chains, I discovered that everybody has a different definition for what some of these criteria mean. For example, when you take the word scalability, some people have one idea of what scalability means and other people have other ideas. So in the Hedera world, what is scalability? Yeah, so, well, I, I think in any technology and especially when you talk about enterprise software, there's scale up and there's scale out. And every blockchain network should be deficient, uh, not deficient, but sufficiently <laughs> decentralized with enough nodes where scale out is not a problem. Uh, what does scale out mean? It means that you have a ton of redundancy in the network, right? Nodes can go down and your applications still run. But when we think about applications that are enterprise centric and really business critical, and frankly, we're seeing so far very few of those in the market. We're seeing a lot of proof of concepts. But when you think about what an enterprise needs to deploy any technology, they think about scale in a way that maybe a startup doesn't. A startup is focused on gaining their first set of users, whereas an enterprise is like, we have to support out of the gate. If we're productionizing this system, it has to be able to be resilient and support these massive workloads. So what we mean by scalability is the ability to support a transaction volume that an enterprise needs at scale. So that isn't tens of transactions per second. That is not 
even maybe a hundreds of transactions per second. That is thousands of transactions per second. Well, also though, it's a public ledger, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yes. And so it's not just, it's not like when you buy like an Oracle cluster and you set the thing up and it can support some number of transactions per second across that cluster. It's a shared network. So it's not just about one organization being able to reach its transactions per second. It's about the the combination of organizations that are sharing that ledger and the entire load that they're putting onto it and making sure that it can sustain that entire load so that no individual user of the ledger experiences something like an outage. Is that correct? Yes. So you are competing for shared resources and there needs to be ample capacity in your overall network to ensure that whoever is participating in the network on those shared resources, you can support their application workloads. With Hedera, out of the gate in a single shard, we are able to support throttled today 10,000 transactions per second. Those transactions are the type of transaction that would be me sending you cryptocurrency. When you talk about uh, compute intensive smart contract type transactions, we can do maybe 450, 500 transactions per second of those. Now, of course, if you have 500, to your point about shared resources, if you have all of your smart contracts using up that capacity, then you can no longer do your 10,000 transactions per second on your simple mm -hmm. uh, cryptocurrency sure. transfer. So yes, it is definitely um, a, you know, what blend of transactions do you want to support? But as we uh, see volume scale, we can, do two things. One, we can increase the throttles mm -hmm. very easily and scale way beyond 10,000 transactions per second. And then the other thing that we can do is go to a sharded solution. And Hedera has some very, I don't know how deep you want to get into this, but uh, Hedera has some very unique aspects when we even think about the future of sharding and the impact on security of the overall system. Yeah, for our audience who probably knows very little about blockchain at this moment, what do you mean by a shard? Because that word does come up when you're talking to the different uh, providers of the different chains. Yeah, so you can think of a shard as a set of computers that is processing transactions and coming to consensus on the order of transactions. And when you use up the capacity of that network, guess what, you need to stand up another network with another group of computers coming to consensus on those transactions as well. But um, you need to make sure that each shard in and of itself is highly secure. And as you add shards, that the overall system itself remains secure. And uh, we know that we have very good solutions there as well. So right now, I'm assuming because you're on a single shard, you haven't really broken a sweat yet. You haven't reached capacity and you're supporting no what's going nowhere near it. And so you're supporting the loads that are on it. But at some point, if you start to reach that capacity, and you'll see that coming probably, uh, you'll be able to prepare another shard. What about finality? You mentioned that as another uh, term. Mm -hmm. And in my studies over the last six months to six to 12 months, I've discovered that finality means different things to different people. What does finality mean to you guys here at Hedera? Uh, well, that's an interesting comment because actually finality shouldn't mean different things to different people. Um, well, marketers, if, if they don't do well on something, they will stretch the definition oh, so that yeah. okay. so that's okay. what I've been bumping into. Okay. So, I'm, so, I'm so sure. let's talk about non-blockchain systems for your audience for a second. When you go into a Starbucks and you swipe your Visa card mm -hmm. because you bought a latte for five dollars, um, there is a moment in time where your transaction, your dollar transaction, is committed to the Visa network. They know that you can afford to pay that, and the transaction is finalized. It has gone through. Um, in a blockchain system, it is the same definition. At what point do you know for sure that enough of the network has come to agreement that your transaction is now final? It cannot be walked back. Exactly. Cannot be, yeah, cannot be revoked. And the interesting thing is in more a 
of the traditional blockchain uh, technology based public networks, they have something called probabilistic finality. And what that means is there is never a moment in time that you know for 100% certainty that your transaction really is final, but there is a point in time where enough of the nodes have come to consensus and you say, okay, that's good enough. And that works fairly well. It's sort of establishing like a confidence level. Exactly. It's not 100% yeah. confident, it's not 100% but it's, cool. it's so confident that we're pretty sure we can move and forward. That, and that right there is the difference with Hedera. There is a moment in time on Hedera with probability of one, which is 100% probability, that all the nodes in the network have, come, have seen your transaction come to consensus and it has now been finalized and it cannot be revoked. Okay, what, about, what, what else should enterprises be looking for when they start to look at blockchain as a technology, as service, some use case? Yeah, so the, the other thing I mentioned just in passing is security, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, enterprises, they think about throughput, obviously, can this thing that I'm choosing, can it support my application workload? But also, how resilient is it? Um, you know, we live in a world where there are uh, distributed denial of service attacks all the time, you know, on public clouds, AWS, a region can go down from time to time. Um, so I don't want to get too <laughs> in the weeds on um, what these terms mean, but in Hedera, we have something called asynchronous Byzantine fault tolerance, which is the highest degree of security that you can get in a distributed system. It means that we are resilient to uh, distributed denial of service attacks. And even if the internet itself is compromised, as long as some messages can make their way to the network, the network will come to consensus on those messages. So it can function in the face of um, uh, slightly below one third of the nodes mm -hmm. being dishonest. No network, you know, once you hit one third of the nodes being dishonest, no network functions. Um, no layer one. No layer one. Budget. That's as good as you can get. And then uh, the other aspect is that we just assume bad actors exist and are out to get you and things can be compromised and you're going to have civil attacks and you're going to have DDoS attacks. And our founder, Dr. Lehman Baird, um, you know, what he invented was to solve for the throughput problem with the highest amount of security. So that is a trade-off that you have to see other chains making all the time. They have to choose, am I going to be fast and less secure? Or am I going to be slow and more secure? It's interesting that you describe that as security because it sounds to me, you used the word resilient after, it sounds like to me more like reliability. That, yeah. that despite whatever some whatever gets thrown at the ledger, it's going to continue to operate in, in these kind of difficult conditions. And I would say, you know, reliability, uh, when you think about how enterprises look at the different technologies they buy, there are some criteria from one technology, so it could be blockchain, databases, application service, it doesn't matter. There are some things that are just critical that apply to all of them. Security, of course, is one of those. Reliability. Yeah. Total cost of ownership. I, and I think I think reliability is a great term because it applies both to the throughput, right? Yeah. Am I going to hit a max number of transactions and my application stops working? That's reliability. Right. And does the thing stay up all the time? Right. Even in the face of attacks. I and just think about like like in in recent history, you know, when cloud first came up and uh, Netflix was on an Amazon and the Amazon cloud went down and Netflix went down there. I'm sure there was an uncomfortable call that took place between the CEO of Netflix and Jeff Bezos or somebody who reported to him. Yeah, because so as, I, I as know. Long as, that's an enterprise app. And as long as they're down, they're losing money and maybe losing users, right? So In another interview at another date, we can talk about that. I worked with Apache Cassandra Adrian Cockroft was the chief architect of that Netflix system that deployed the first uh, massively scalable database in Amazon Web Services. Mm -hmm. And yes, you, you're absolutely right. They were very focused on reliability. And so that's going to be a, a major criteria item for any enterprise that's picking yeah. a chain. Yeah. Because when they're going to pick something, I think they're going to pick something 
strategic. Yeah. And, you and, don't and pick and one other, chain for this and one chain for that. You want to pick something. Yeah. That you, you talked about total cost of ownership as well. So, um, you know, this is incredibly important to enterprises. Um, enterprises have to budget and they have to budget predictably. And so um, that's hard in the blockchain world because you have to pay for your API calls to your network, whatever network you're using. Mm-hmm. When you're paying for your resources, you are using the cryptocurrency of that network to pay for the resources. You can't use fiat currency. You can't just pay in dollars the way I pay for Amazon. I mean, you, there could be something built on top that abstracts that away and you pay a, a vendor and they pay the API calls on your behalf. But the actual API calls itself to the network are based in the native cryptocurrency. Um, and you know that's a challenge if you have your pricing in your cryptocurrency because as we've all seen, even if you don't know blockchain, you know that cryptocurrency is a volatile market. When you say you have your pricing in your cryptocurrency, you mean that like it so, costs this, amount, this much amount of cryptocurrency to do that transaction? Yeah, so let's say we are a network, the David Berlin's network, and we have Davids, right? And we're paying in Davids. So you may say this resource costs one David. I just retired, by the way. There's a lot of Davids out there. Go ahead. This resource costs two Davids. This resource costs three Davids. But as an enterprise, you have dollars or sterling or euros, whatever your currency is, and you have to budget for that. But you have to budget like, okay, the cost today for me is one David is one dollar, but tomorrow one David is 10 cents, and three days later, one David is $10. Like, how can I predictably budget for this system? And we are governed by this global organization. And one of the, there's a pricing committee who makes these decisions. And one of the very first decisions at Hedera was the initial council members saying the pricing model has to be predictable. So how do you do that when your currency is unpredictable? You price all your services in dollars. Yes, you pay the API calls in your cryptocurrency, but the pricing is done in dollars. And that means that, you know, for us, a simple cryptocurrency transaction is one one hundredth of a penny, always. No matter what. No matter what. And then a you know, smart contract uh, call, um, you know, might be a dollar, depending on the amount of resources you're using. But it will always be a dollar. So does that mean on the back end, you're essentially sliding the cost in your cryptocurrency, so correct. If, if yeah, every ten minutes it gets okay. I get it. So, so the, the actual cost in cryptocurrency is changing. When the yeah, how much? It's the exact opposite of what everyone else. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So but then, enterprises love it, and it's frankly hard for me to con- having been in the enterprise software space for many many years. It's just hard for me to conceive of you know some of these procurement teams. You know, they're not well, that, that's got to be a non-starter because I've been I've been doing this kind of work for thirty years, and every now and then you have to make a proposition to somebody and uh, your boss, and then they, the question is, well, how much is it going to cost over a period of a year? And if you can't do the math because there's some volatility in the math, then they're going to send you away and tell you to come come back when you have the answer. That, that's right. Yeah. So yeah, I can totally understand that. Well, uh, Christian Hasker, Chief Marketing Officer for Hedera, it's great to uh, sit here and meet with yeah, you. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. Congratulations on Blockchain Journal. Thank By the you way, so I know much. you've had um, some great interviews here yeah. in Davos. I haven't watched them all all the way through, but I intend to catch I greatly appreciate the support and uh, look forward to keeping an eye on how things go. And good luck with the rest of your World Economic Forum. Thank you. Yeah, okay.